Hi everyone, and welcome to the base class. Abdurrahman Adeye is my name, and we are still under the topic capital investment decision. In making decision under capital investment, there's need for the company, be the finance, uh, the finance, the finance manager, the entrepreneur himself. As the case may be, the owner of the company, the manager in, uh, in charge of it, to do what? To appraise the projects in which they want to invest the resources of the company on, in order to determine whether the project is worthwhile or not. As we know that this investment is involved with huge capital outlay. So we need to do what we need to appraise the investment in which we want to invest our money on in order to know whether it is worthwhile or not. At least whether we should invest on the project or not. In that wise, therefore, uh, we say that we have basically two methods for appraising projects. We have the traditional method and we have the discounted cash flow method. Have dealt with the traditional method, the traditional approach. So Today I'm treating, I'm looking at the discounted cash flow method of investment appraiser. So the discounted cash flow method is an investment appraiser technique which takes into account both the timing of cash flow and the profitability of an investment over a project's life. It takes into effect the timing of the cash flow and also the profitability of the project over the project's life. What do we mean by timing of cash flow? Timing of cash flow can be can simply be explained as the time value of money, that is the time at which in which you receive the inflow from your investment. Take for example, an investment that is going to yield, that's yielding over a period of five years. You have invested initially, and this investment is going to flow back, I mean, return from that investment is going to flow back to you over a period of five years. So the value, the purchasing power of the inflow in year one will not be the same as the purchasing power of what to of the inflow in year two. Simply put, a lot of factors will have affected it, which has to do what with time. For example, inflation. Inflation will have affected what the cash flow now and the cash flow in the following in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in next year, in the future year. So therefore, there is time difference between what to year one and year two cash flow. So therefore, it takes what into cognizance the recognition of what of the cash flow of timing of cash flow that is cash flow in year one and cash flow in year two. So by that, therefore, this kind of cash flow take cognizance of what of timing factor, the timing factor of a project of what of the cash flow. Also, it also look at what at the profitability. So these are majorly the major. These are majorly the difference between uh, the discounted cash flow and the traditional approach. The traditional approach does not take effect of what to of timing difference, which will give a higher value to a net to, to to a particular currency now over what to over the future currency. So which can be as a result of what of inflation. Okay, so this CF tends to do a look at the timing of what of the cash flow and what to and profitability. Because if you look at the uh, discounted payback period, I mean, and if you look at the payback period, the payback period simply determine when you are going to do what to receive back your what to your initial investment. Anything after the after the after you have received your what your initial investment payback period, the traditional approach in general does not what. Take cognizance of any inflow that comes after it, but its major inflow is whether concern is to do or to look at the 
time in which you are going to do or recoup your initial investment. So under the scattered cash flow, the scattered cash flow takes a takes step further by constricting what the timing of cash flow and also what to uh, profitability of an investment. So it's going to take it's going to make use of all the cash flow in which will accrue to work to that particular investment before it can make its own decision, before the decision can be taken on uh, using the scattered cash flow method. So there are two important things that the discarded cash flow tends to do or tends to look at. So it, it looks at the cash flow. It looks at the cash flow, cash flow of, a, of a project and not the accounted profits. Cash flow is the money that what that flow back to the company as a result of what to have impacting on that investment, that project. Why the accounting profit? Accounting profit is arrived at after you have deducted, you have, you have, you have deducted what some national cost, such as what well, such as depreciation. So when you are using, when you are computing the scattered cash flow, when you are, when you are using what the scattered cash flow method, you have to consider the what the cash flow, not the accounting profit. If you are given information as relating to the accounting profit, the accounting profit, it means the depreciation. You have to have back the depreciation to the work. The accounting profit you have in order for you to arrive at what are uh, the cash flow, real cash flow. So in that wise, therefore, two important things that look at is what the cash flow. Number one is what is cash flow. Also, it also do what it also does what the timing of cash flow is taken into account by discounting them. So when you say discounting, by discounting, which the formula the, 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 the subtopic explained, by discounting, it means we are given a higher value to a currency, to the value of what to a higher value to what to the currency received in received now on what to, to the currency received in, 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 in future. What I'm trying to say is that what to one error today is what more. Than one naira tomorrow. A bed at hand is worth more than 10 bears or what? In the forest. Because we already have this already. So, in order for you to do what? To, in order for you to make some you have to, you need to make some provisions for what? To, for probability that what? You may not receive what? That same amount of what? Or of, uh, of, of, of the cash flow that is coming what? To you in future. Which is a result of what to of timing factor, timing difference, timing. So as I said, the purchasing power of what of the currency today will may be higher than that of what to of the currency tomorrow. In the case where we what to where we have what inflation. So inflation will have what make the purchasing power of a particular currency uh, of today what more than what what they are going to receive what in future. So that is basically what um, this kind of cash flow is talking about. It takes cognizance of what of cash flow and not accounting profit, and it also what take cognizance of what to of this counting the time value of money, the time value, the timing of cash flow. Does it put that into consideration? So also there are some things that there are some assumptions that we normally make under this kind of cash flow. The initial heart lay in which you put to do what you invested in the project. That hardly that cash flow is the time is what is assumed to occur in year zero. That is now. If we invest a certain amount of money on a particular project, that investment, that outflow which you have done to what to on that investment is what to that particular money is assumed to occur on what in year zero. It is assumed to occur in year zero. The initial outlay is assumed to occur in year zero. Why any cash flow during the year after you have invested in the first place? So secondly, why any cash flow that accrues or flows out during the year is assumed to be incurred and to, 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 to be received at what at the end of year one? Any cash flow that occurs during the year 
any cash flow that occurs during the year, take it for example January, February, okay, take for example, during the year, let's say March, April, May, June, July, those are during the year. Those, so those cash flow that occurs during the year is assumed to occur at the end of that particular year. But the third scenario is that any cash flow that occurs at the beginning, at the beginning of the year, is assumed to occur what in, in the previous year. Any cash flow that occurs at the beginning of the year is assumed to occur in the previous year. Why? Because the effect of what or the cash flow occurring at the beginning of the year is not as a result of what or any activity that has taken place at the early time of that year. It was as a result of what or activities that has taken place in the previous year. So you have to take that cash flow back to the previous year to assume that what to that cash flow you are seeing now or cause as a result of what of past events. So it does not belong to what to the new year, to the early year, it belongs to what to the past uh, past year. So those are the three things in which uh, we are going to be making use of under the scattered cash flow. Now we have introduced the uh, the scattered cash flow method of investment appraisal. So in subsequent video we shall be looking, we shall be examining, we start to examine each of what each of the method we have under the discounted cash flow method. So at this point, I'm going to call it a class now. So in a subsequent video, I'm going to do a video on what to detailing uh, the formulas, the, the subtopic we have what under the discounted cash flow method. So watch out for the next video. And please, if you have not subscribed to this uh, YouTube channel, kindly click on the subscribe button. If you have any comments, click on the comment section and put your, put in your comment and I'll be waiting to do what, I'll be ready to do what, to attend to your comments, to respond to your comments. So thank you and God bless.